Amy from the North Columbus Public Library and thank you so much for joining me today as we celebrate Veterans Day with a special guest speaker. Before I introduce our guest speaker, I want to go over three facts about Veterans Day that you may not know about. First, did you know that Veterans Day is actually spelled without an apostrophe? The reason for that is because Veterans Day is for celebrating all veterans, not just one single veteran. The second fact is, did you know that Veterans Day oftentimes gets mixed up with Memorial Day? Memorial Day is actually celebrated at the end of May, and that is where we celebrate veterans who have passed away, most notably those that have given their lives in battle or during wartime. Veterans Day is normally celebrated on November 11th, and it is intended for those who are still with us. So I hope that clears up a couple of things about those two holidays. Lastly, Veterans Day is actually known as Armistice Day, which is um, a celebration of the end of World War I. So just over 100 years ago, we celebrated Armistice Day. And besides the United States, there are several other countries, um, our allies during that time, who continue to this day to celebrate Armistice Day or what we call Veterans Day. So I hope you learned a few new things. And now I'm going to introduce our guest speaker. Here we have George Washington, and he is our first president. He's going to give a special message to our veterans and stay tuned after the video learn about some new books that you can check out from the library thank you so much for joining me for today's program and here is george washington Good morning. A good chilly morning to you all. Nothing like a nice fire in the morning to warm one's bones. I would like to welcome you all to my home here in Mount Vernon and welcome you on such a wonderful day as today. A day that we have set aside to recognize those individuals who have dedicated their life in service of our country. These individuals that I'm speaking of are veterans. The veterans that have fought for and defended this country's right to exist. I have a special place in my heart for veterans. You see, I, I too am a veteran, and I served alongside countless others in our war for independence against the Crown. Growing up, not too far from here, just downstream, I had no idea of where my life would take me. I had no thoughts of being in the military, being a young lad. Mine was tied up every day in farming, in schooling, and of course, chores. Raised in a family of nine, nine siblings. I was the oldest child of my father's second marriage to Mary Ball. Raised on the farm, learning agriculture, animal husbandry, and dabbling a little bit as a younger child in surveying, assisting my father. 
I also had schooling. My mother and father taught me at home. And I was also taught by our church sextant. Arithmetic, arithmetic, language, penmanship, and science. All these subjects would serve me well later in life. I had one change in my life that fundamentally changed, I feel, the direction that I would take in later years. My father passed away when I was a young lad. And with this, my whole world changed. I became the head of my mother's household and much responsibility was placed on me. My brother seeing this a few years after my father's passing took me under his wing and had me move in with him and his wife in their home upstream from our farm. He called his home Mount Vernon. He had named the, the estate his home after his commanding officer in the British Army Admiral Vernon. You see, my brother Lawrence was in charge of all the military in Virginia, all the militia forces. And he would fill my head for many days with military experiences that he had had with the militia. This was my first introduction to the military. Later, after my brother passed, I was offered a position as one of the sections, districts of the militias in Virginia. The training that I had and the surveying skills that my brother had taught me served me very well. Being able to navigate into the wilderness and be able to return safely. These skills all served me well. During my time in the military, in the Virginia militia, was when the Seven Years' War broke out. I spent many years in the militia. And after the truce was called with France, I was able to return home here to Mount Vernon. You see, after my brother's passing, I was able to purchase Mount Vernon and now call it my home. After returning home after the Seven Years' War, I continued my agriculture endeavors and other endeavors here, I discovered there was a young lady, a widower, who lived outside of Williamsburg. I became very interested in her. After much courting, we were married. And I moved my new wife, Martha, here with her two young children to Mount Vernon, where we set up housekeeping. We had a wonderful time here, seeing to all the needs of such a large estate. But it seems that Great Britain would not let the colonies alone. They increased our taxes, increased our regulations, so much that we knew hostilities were on the horizon. And when these hostilities started, 
Congress had convened and determined that we needed a commander in chief to serve and to direct the colony's military. If we were going to fight and fight for our freedom, we needed a commander in chief. I was chosen, was very honored to serve in that position. Those are some of the memories that will stay with me forever. I served with some of the bravest men I have ever known. I have seen countless patriots die on the battlefield, get wounded, carry those wounds with them back home. But they wear those wounds as a badge of honor. After our freedom was won during the American Revolutionary War, I returned home here to Mount Vernon to continue my pursuits as a private citizen. Congress had convened, and it was determined that our new government, our now United States of America, no longer the 13 colonies, needed a commander in chief, a president, to preside over the Congress and of the duties of the country. I was chosen, I accepted these duties again, to serve my country, knowing all along that this was just a temporary position. To serve four years, possibly another four years of the term, but that was it. My endeavors were to serve the country, but then return to my private life and my home here, which I have done after those two terms. But today is not about myself. Today is concerning our veterans. We should all hold in our heart a special place for those veterans that we meet, for those veterans that we know family members that are veterans, to thank them. Thank them very heartily for their service. They will wear this thank you as a, a badge of honor. I would like to thank you all today for coming to celebrate such a wonderful holiday as Veterans Day. And to thank those veterans every day, not just on Veterans Day, but every day that you meet a veteran for his service. Thank you all for coming. God bless our veterans. God bless you all. And God bless the United States of America. Hi everyone, this is Amy again from the North Columbus Public Library and I wanted to show you a few books and movies that are available for checkout from the library. And remember that you can check these out at any time um, online, you can request them at cvlga.org. So the first book is called Soldier Girls, The Battles of Three Women at Home and at War by Helen Thorpe. This describes the experiences of three women soldiers deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq to reveal how their military service has affected their friendships, personal lives, and families. 
detailing the realities of their work on bases and in war zones and how their choices and losses shaped their perspectives. Next, we have We Were There, Voices of African American Veterans from World War II to the War in Iraq. Award-winning journalist Yvonne Laddie never bothered to find out the extent of her father's service until it was almost too late. It's inspired by his moving story and eager to uncover the little known stories of other black veterans from those who served again in the Second World War to the Iraq War. Laddie set about interviewing veterans of every stripe, men and women, Army, Navy, and Air Force personnel, prisoners of war, and brigadier generals. On the end, we have Portraits of Courage, a Commander-in-Chief's Tribute to American Warriors. President George W. Bush presents a collection of oil paintings and stories of servicemen and women who have served our nation with honor since 9-11 and whom he has come to know personally. Growing out of his own outreach and the ongoing work of the Bush's Institute Military Service Initiative, each painting is accompanied by the inspiring story of the veteran depicted. These stories of courage and resilience honor our men and women in uniform, highlight their family and caregivers who bear the burden of their sacrifice and help Americans understand how we can support our veterans and empower them to succeed. Next, we have a set of books here that highlight George Washington and the American Revolution. The first one is a brand new book. It's called You Never Forget Your First, a biography of George Washington by Alexis Coe. Um, it highlights um, his early life and how he was raised from uh, a struggling single mother, uh, his demanding military life. So there's so many different highlights, again, about his early life that this book goes over and some that we may not have known about before. She also, um, Alexis Coe, the author, combines rigorous research and unsentimental storytelling uh, finally separating the man from the legend. Next, we have Valiant Ambition, George Washington, Benedict Arnold, and the Fate of the American Revolution. This is an account of the complicated middle years of the American Revolution that shares lesser known insights into the tragic relationship between George Washington and Benedict Arnold. On the end, we have revolutionary George Washington at war. And this is by Robert L. O'Connell. He's a military historian who presents a reappraisal of George Washington as a young soldier of destiny whose Revolutionary War leadership came to define the American character. Next, we have a set of movies that are available for checkout. And the first one is called Served Like a Girl. And this centers on five women veterans who have endured unimaginable trauma in service. And they create a shared sisterhood to help the rising number of stranded homeless women veterans by entering into a competition that unexpectedly catalyzes moving events in their own lives to bring them full circle in a quest for healing and hope. Next, we have a very unique movie. This is called They Shall Not Grow Old. And this was directed by renowned Peter Jackson. Um, so, marking the center of the First World War, internationally renowned director Peter Jackson uses the voices of veterans combined with original archival footage to bring to life the reality of war on the front line for a whole new generation. Footage has been colorized and transformed with modern production techniques to present never before seen At the details. end, we have the, the Tuskegee Airmen. 
they fought two wars. This is a PBS production, um, and it centers on how African Americans were challenged and discriminated against uh, not only intellectually, but also their physical abilities to fly an aircraft in combat. Uh, these hero air pilots trained, were trained in the Deep South and became what we know as the Tuskegee Airmen, flying combat aircraft during World War II for their country. They had to battle on two fronts, the Axis powers in Europe and North Africa and the racism at home. Here are some more movies too, and these are more of the feature films and um, miniseries type. The first one is a fairly new production. It's called 1917. Uh, at the height of the First World War, two so young British, Schofield and Blake, are given a seemingly impossible mission. In the race against time, they must cross enemy territory and deliver a message that will stop a deadly attack on hundreds of soldiers. Blake's own brother, among them. This is a superbly done movie that has awesome cinematography and I have seen it multiple times and I couldn't recommend it any higher. Next is a mini series um, produced by HBO um, that's been around for a number of years now and it's called John Adams. While our new nation was suffering attacks from both within and without, John Adams had a vision of a nation of liberty and justice for all. He guided his peers, General George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson in setting the values of the agenda for a glorious free America. Adams and his wife, Abigail, refined these ambitions, democratic ideals, and their partnership became one of the most moving love stories in American history. On the end, we have Band of Brothers, which is also um, based on a book. And this is also another HBO production, and it tells the story of Easy Company 506th Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division. U.S. Army and elite rifle company that parachuted into France early on D-Day morning. Fought in the Battle of the Bulge, captured Hitler's eagle nest, and suffered heavy casualties. Also includes a document the soldiers in Easy Company. All of these productions here I've seen and I highly recommend. They are very course, well done. I wanted to mention some books that are available for kids. Um, some of you may have seen the who was, the what was. These are super popular and they're easy to read um, for all age levels really um, the, and they're more considered chapter books although they have a lot of images that they use so the first one is who was george washington and the second one we have on the end is what was the vietnam war i also wanted to add that we have several books on veterans day and this one in the middle um, in particular uh, highlights the holiday itself and it's by marley Targ Brill, but there are several others too that are available. Thank you so out. much for watching today's program. I hope that you've learned something new. Again, if you find any of these titles um, interesting and you would like to check them out, just visit our website at cblga.org. Thank you so much for watching the special Veterans Day program honoring all people.